Researchers are scouring a stretch of land in Ethiopia searching for ancient human teeth. And what they find could teach us about early human development. Picture this. Everything you thought you knew about your ancient family tree, it might be wrong. Scientists digging in the scorched earth of Ethiopia just unearthed fossils. We do have our genus. that are forcing us to completely rethink how humans evolved. I do think this is uh, truly a momentous moment in understanding human evolution. Now really understand where and when the first human uh, lived and how it evolved. For decades, we imagined a neat linear progression from ape-like creatures to modern humans. One species dies out, another takes over, right? Turns out, our ancestors were living in a far messier, more complicated world than we ever imagined. I am so excited uh, that we found these particular fossils. The discovery that changed everything. In August 2025, a team of international scientists working at the Leti Gararu Research Project site in Ethiopia's Afar region announced findings that sent shockwaves through the scientific community. They discovered 13 fossil teeth, dating between 2.6 and 2.8 million years ago, revealing that two distinct types of human ancestors, early Homo and a previously unknown species of Australopithecus, were living in exactly the same place at exactly the same time. Now, you might be thinking, so what? They found some old teeth. But here's why this matters. Scientists had long believed that the genus Homo appeared after Australopithecus disappeared from the fossil record, rather than the two being contemporaries. The discovery proves that assumption was completely wrong. The research team, led by Brian Vilmoire from the University of Nevada, Las Vegas, and working with Arizona State University's Institute of Human Origins, determined that while some of the teeth belonged to the genus Homo, a distinctive set of upper and lower teeth represented a brand new species of Australopithecus, one that had never been found anywhere on Earth. This new species is clearly different from Australopithecus afarensis, the famous Lucy, whose skeleton was discovered in nearby Hadar. The Leti Gararu site wasn't chosen randomly. This same location made headlines back in 2013 when researchers discovered the jaw of the earliest known Homo specimen ever found, dating to 2.8 million years ago. The new teeth discoveries confirm and expand on that earlier breakthrough, showing that our lineage is far more ancient and far more tangled than we realized. Why this location matters. The Afar Depression in northeastern Ethiopia is essentially a time capsule. This region sits in what geologists call a structural basin. Imagine a massive bowl on Earth's surface that naturally collects layers of sediment like pages in a history book. These basins preserve fossils better than the surrounding landscape, which makes them invaluable for understanding human evolution. Ramon Aerosmith, a geologist at Arizona State University who has worked with the Leti Gararu Research Project since 2002, explained that the area has an interpretable geologic record with excellent age control for the time range of 2.3 to 2.95 million years ago. This precision is crucial. Without accurate dating, you're just looking at bones. With it, you're reading a story. But here's what makes this particular discovery so extraordinary. The time period from 3 million to 2 million years ago has been incredibly difficult to study because erosion in rivers and lakes was at a low level, meaning only small amounts of sediment were deposited, and those deposits contain the fossils of our ancestors. Finding well-preserved fossils from this era is like finding a needle in a geological haystack. The Afar region itself is also significant for another reason. The nearby Turkana Basin, stretching across southern Ethiopia and northern Kenya, had previously provided evidence that Homo and another human relative called Paranthropus coexisted about 1.5 million years ago. The new Leti Geraru findings push this pattern of coexistence much further back in time 
and revealed that the picture was even more complex than anyone suspected. The fossils tell a different story. Thirteen teeth might not sound like much. After all, we find thousands of fossils all the time, right? But in paleoanthropology, teeth are gold mines of information. They preserve better than most other bones, they reveal what animals ate, and their shapes are distinctive enough to identify species. The research team concluded that the Leti Geraru Australopithecus teeth represent a new species rather than belonging to Australopithecus afarensis, confirming that there is still no evidence of Lucy's kind younger than 2.95 million years ago. This is critical because it means Lucy's species went extinct, and this new Australopithecus species was living alongside the earliest members of our own genus. What makes these particular teeth so special? Their morphology, their shape and structure is distinct from any Australopithecus species we've found before. The teeth differ from both Australopithecus afarensis and another species called Australopithecus garhi. Think of it like finding a completely new branch on your family tree that nobody knew existed. The three homo teeth found at the site in 2015 were equally important. Vilmore noted that these teeth confirmed the antiquity of our lineage, but emphasized that scientists still know very little. They understand what the teeth and mandible of the earliest homo look like, but that's essentially it. The rest of the skeleton remains a mystery, which makes finding additional fossils critically important. What's remarkable is the spatial and temporal overlap. These weren't species that lived thousands of years apart or on opposite sides of the continent. They were contemporaries, sharing the same landscape between 2.6 and 2.8 million years ago. That raises some fascinating questions. Were they competing for resources? Did they interact? Did they know the other existed? Rewriting the timeline. For generations, students have been taught a simplified version of human evolution. Ape-like creatures gradually evolved into various Australopithecus species, which then evolved into the genus Homo, which eventually led to us a straight line from point A to point B. The Leti Geraru discovery obliterates that narrative. This new research shows that the image many of us have in our minds of an ape to a Neanderthal to a modern human is not correct. Evolution doesn't work like that, explained Kay Reed, a paleoecologist at Arizona State University who has co-directed the Leti Geraru research project since 2002. Here we have two hominin species that are together. And human evolution is not linear. It's a bushy tree. There are life forms that go extinct. A bushy tree. That's the new model scientists are embracing. Instead of a straight march from ape-like ancestors to modern humans, researchers now see a tangled branching tree with multiple species coexisting, suggesting that nature tested multiple versions of being human before our lineage endured. The time interval between about three and two million years ago is considered a critical period in human evolution. This is when the genera Homo and Paranthropus first appear in the fossil record, and a possible ancestor of these genera, Australopithecus afarensis, disappears. But the new evidence shows it wasn't a clean transition. There was overlap, competition, and diversity. According to the new research, there were potentially as many as four hominin lineages living in Eastern Africa between 3.0 and 2.5 million years ago. Early Homo, Paranthropus, Australopithecus garhi, and the newly discovered Lady Geraru Australopithecus, four different types of human-like creatures, all walking the same landscapes, all adapting to the same challenges, but in different ways. This fundamentally changes how we understand our place in the natural world. We weren't the inevitable outcome of evolution. We were just one experiment among many, and we happened to be the one that survived. The technology that made it possible. None of this would be possible without modern scientific methods that simply didn't exist a few decades ago. The dating of these fossils relies on a technique called argon-argon dating which measures the decay of radioactive isotopes in volcanic rock layers surrounding the fossils. 
This gives researchers incredibly precise ages for the sediments, and by extension, the fossils buried within them. But dating is just the beginning. Researchers also analyze tooth morphology using advanced measurement techniques and comparative databases containing thousands of hominin specimens. They examine the geological context, looking at sediment types, grain sizes, and chemical compositions to understand the ancient environment where these creatures lived. The team is now examining tooth enamel to determine what these species were eating, which could reveal whether early Homo and the new Australopithecus species were competing for or sharing resources. Isotope analysis of tooth enamel can reveal whether animals ate mostly grasses, leaves, fruits, or meat. This kind of dietary information helps scientists understand ecological relationships between species. The Ledi Gararu site benefits from particularly good preservation conditions. The area was once a floodplain with rivers and lakes, and volcanic activity in the region regularly deposited ash layers that act like time stamps in the geological record. These ash layers can be dated precisely, sandwiching the fossil-bearing sediments and giving researchers confidence in their age estimates. What's perhaps most impressive is how collaboration between different scientific disciplines makes these discoveries possible. Geologists establish the timeline and environmental context. Paleontologists identify and describe the fossils. Comparative anatomists determine how they relate to other species. Climate scientists reconstruct ancient environments. It takes a village to understand a 2.8 million year old tooth. What other sites are revealing? The Ledi Gararu discovery doesn't exist in isolation. Across Africa, other recent findings are painting a similarly complex picture of human evolution, with multiple discoveries challenging old assumptions and revealing unexpected diversity. In West Africa, a groundbreaking discovery in early 2025 pushed back the timeline of human occupation in rainforests. By over 130,000 years, researchers re-examined an archaeological site called Bete Fern in Côte d'Ivoire near West Africa's southern coast, where stone tools had been uncovered in the 1980s but were subsequently lost during the Second Ivorian Civil War in 2011. Lead researcher Eslam Ben Arouz from Spain's National Center for Human Evolution Research explained that before this study, the oldest secure evidence for human habitation in African rainforests was around 18,000 years ago with the oldest evidence of rainforest habitation anywhere coming from Southeast Asia at about 70,000 years ago. This new finding pushed back the oldest known evidence of humans in rainforests by more than double the previously known estimate to 150,000 years ago. Similarly, excavations in Equatorial Guinea revealed evidence of humans systematically occupying Central African rainforests over 40,000 years ago. Dr. Juan Ignacio Morales from IPHESCERCA noted that the tools recovered demonstrate a technological tradition connected with other stone tool industries in Central and Southern Africa, suggesting sustained transmission of technical knowledge over millennia and a deeply rooted cultural heritage. These rainforest discoveries are significant because, traditionally, Studies on human evolution have centered on arid and semi-arid regions of Africa, and rainforests have been little explored. The assumption was that dense, humid forests were too challenging for early humans. These new findings prove that assumption wrong. Our ancestors were more adaptable and innovative than we gave them credit for. Meanwhile, at Olduvai Gorge in Tanzania, Researchers discovered the earliest evidence of systematic bone tool production and use, dating back 1.5 million years. The newly discovered bone tools, consisting of 27 deliberately split and chipped large mammal long bones, date to about a million years earlier than the first evidence of such technology, and are thought to have been manufactured by Homo habilis. This discovery suggests that early humans had more sophisticated technological abilities much earlier than scientists previously believed. The implications for human origins theory. So what does all this mean for our understanding of where we came from? 
First, it means abandoning the idea of evolutionary progress as a ladder. Evolution isn't a march toward perfection with humans at the top. It's a branching bush where different lineages try different strategies, and most of them go extinct. We're not the pinnacle of evolution. We're just the survivors. Second, it suggests that the cognitive and behavioral traits we associate with being human may have evolved independently in multiple lineages. If different hominin species were living alongside each other, potentially interacting, they may have learned from each other or independently developed similar solutions to similar problems. The discovery suggests that nature tested multiple versions of being human before our lineage endured. What does it mean to be human? Is it brain size, tool use, complex social behavior? The more we learn about our extinct relatives, the less clear these boundaries become. The Lady Giraru findings also raise questions about competitive exclusion. The ecological principle that two species competing for the same resources can't coexist indefinitely. If early Homo and this new Australopithecus species were living in the same place, how did they partition resources? Were they eating different foods, using different habitats, or active at different times of day? Researchers are now investigating whether early Homo and the unidentified Australopithecus species were eating the same things, whether they were fighting for or sharing resources, and whether they passed each other daily. These questions might seem impossible to answer from fossil teeth, but isotope analysis, wear patterns, and comparative ecology can provide surprising insights. There's also the question of why some lineages survived while others didn't. What gave early Homo the edge? Was it larger brains, better tools, more flexible social structures? Or was it just luck, being in the right place when environmental conditions changed? The discovery reminds us how much we still don't know. Scientists haven't even named the new Australopithecus species yet, because they need more fossils to fully understand its characteristics and relationships. Each discovery answers some questions while raising a dozen more.